you are not going to believe what happened to fellow RVer Greg and his wife. As he did that, my camper rolled off his jacks about a foot to a foot and a half and bam, down onto the ground. My wife inside with our two dogs, who was scared to death. She didn't know what was going on. So I'm sure any viewer, let alone any wife out there, could about imagine being in the very back of a camper when it starts shifting and moving and all of a sudden slams down to the ground. Is it that there were some bolts missing or did that were never installed, period, or they backed out? And Tom, I'd like to tell you about that. <laughs> they were missing. I even have him on video when he pulled that off and I said, are there no bolts there? And he quietly just said, no. My shelving, my floors in the cabinets, the dividing walls were imploding. I mean, some of the staples had virtually pulled three-fourths of the way out. Trim was being pulled off. I hate to say this, but I really don't want this to turn into some catastrophic event where someone dies because you hit the nail on the head, Tom. Why on earth? A company like Grand Design, who charges top dollar for their product, why is the most simplest of quality control on putting six or seven lag bolts in a wall failing on a massive number that felt like they were trying to weasel out of it or get out of it any way they could by putting the blame on me. I don't want to add any more stress to your plate, Greg, uh, but... I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.live. what happened to fellow RV or Greg and his wife trying to get service for their grand design RV. Plus we have even more updates that we're gonna add later on in the video. Information is coming out hard and fast on RV Frame Flex. So make sure you subscribe so you catch all of the informative videos on our channel. I'm happy to have Greg Carson here uh, on the program today and uh, Greg, You've got like one of the most insane videos out there around some the frame damage and frame flex that that we've been seeing. Specifically, when the uh, the technician from Grand Design came out to assess the damage, and I may be jumping in a little bit early, but uh, tell me uh, what model do you have? How long? How long have you owned it? Oh, certainly, Tom. Uh, we own a 2022 Grand Design Solitude 380 FL. We took possession of this particular unit on February 21st of 2022, a day that will live in one for me. Right. And so you've only had it for, what, a couple of years now? Yeah, we've, we've had it for about two years, Tom. Uh, we bought it. Uh, we winter in Bullhead City, Arizona. We purchased it across the river at RV Country in Laughlin. And that year, when we wrapped up our winter, we took it to home, which was about close to 2,000 miles away from here. And then that following November in 2023, uh, or excuse me, yes, it was, would have been then. Uh, we brought it here to Bullhead City, traveled to Texas for a month, brought it back here, and then parked it. So that's literally the only use it has seen. It's been 7,000 miles is all that we've told this camper. Um, myself being a contractor, Tom, I'm, I'm exceptionally anal retentive about how much weight I'm putting in this thing, where it's being distributed. Uh, we don't have a generator. My front compartments don't carry much of anything. Um, I usually leave any heavy burdening up to my pickup truck itself as we drive uh, a one-ton Chevy Dually diesel long bed, which is capable of uh, well over 5,000 pounds the way I have it set up uh, with airbags in the back, et cetera. So never, never, ever beyond my capacity for weights and ratios whatsoever. That was going to be one of my questions is uh, if you were overweight or not. I mean, if you, 
and you just answered that. So you're not overweight. Uh, I assume you have not gone like deep boondocking locations off road. Uh, no, sir. We are, I guess what you would classify as glampers, so to speak. <laughs> we don't do any, no boondocking. Um, we're the type just want to set it and forget it, you know, park on our old service RV site. So no, sir, never any boondocking or off road. Okay. And uh, I guess for, we've got a lot of viewers that are not aware of this problem called frame flex or frame failure. And it's a lot of grand design RVs, but it's not just grand design RVs from what we understand. And uh, what was the first thing you noticed on your rig that you said like, this is not right. This shouldn't be doing this. Certainly. Um, I've been following this issue, Tom, for about a year now. And I didn't feel the need for me to start being proactive and looking for any signs of anything. So the very first clue for me was when we brought this rig back from Texas to Bullhead City, uh, which was uh, shortly after the weekend of Thanksgiving, of just this past Thanksgiving, I noticed uh, if you're familiar with the 380 model people, it's a front living room model, which has the televator, the front cabinets, and all that stuff in the front living room. And I noticed the, the shelf that carries where the televator is, where it meets the wall, was creating a wear mark that followed the perfect profile of the routered edge of the trim. So I started thinking, this is a clear indication of movement. I should probably look into this a little further. And then with the help of some good friends of ours, Bill and Therese, or excuse me, Mark and Therese, I won't say their last name so they don't feel incriminated, um, had a 2021 uh, 399TH, and they just got rid of their camper that was having a massive problem with rain flex. It was destroying it. They said, well, here's some other signs you should look for. So I started looking, and like my video said, I followed a lot of stuff. The main things that I found that were the tip off, I started inside, I removed all the contents from all the front cabinets and my shelving, my floors in the cabinets, the dividing walls were imploding. I mean, some of the staples had virtually pulled three fourths of the way out. Trim was being pulled off. I stuck my head inside of uh, the door side of the front cabinet because I noticed a bulge in my wall where the expansion joint was cut. And those screws that attach the cabinetry to that wall had pulled about three quarters inch of a way away. Well, I shouldn't say pulled. The wall actually moved out. So I knew there is something bad going on. Here. So I went outside, examined the trim where it comes up the pylon into the cap of the camper. That trim that forms that shape and contour a telltale sign is the caulking is pulling free and your decals show marks of where they're like being eroded and worn away. Um, so then I, I knew I had a problem. Now, if you're new to the RV life or even experienced, I have a course that you can get available for free. It's the beginner's guide to RVing and it's through RV Life or RV Trip Wizard. So if you are already a member, you can get this course completely for free. And as you may have heard me mention before, we love our RV Life and RV Trip Wizard uh, membership because that's how we navigate through the country and make sure we stay on RV safe roads. We keep track of our entire camping schedule and uh, it's just great being able to input all the campgrounds that we're going to be staying at and the dates and then it tells us the route to take we love it uh, actually i'll put a qr code right here so you can just scan it with your smartphone and actually i'll give you a code here on the screen that will save you 25 percent off of your membership yes 
and then you can go to RV Masterclass, which is part of RV Life, and find my course. And again, there will be a link to this down below in the description and the pinned comment, as well as our other favorite camping apps. So what I did was uh, I filed a claim at Grand Design. I called them up and uh, spoke to one of their people in the warranty department. They instructed me to fill out the questionnaire they sent me and then contact RV Country and Lockwood, my dealership, because they know how to handle the problem. Oh. <laughs> Not so much. So I call them up, talk to the service manager, explain my situation. When can I bring it in? The service manager said to me, Did you frame flex? What, what is that? I've never heard of that before. Uh, so explain to me what that is. And I thought, if I have to explain what your job is, we have a problem and a disconnect here. So I explained to him what's going on, uh, that I need to bring it in to measure it. He said, I don't even know what that is. We've never seen that before. I don't even know how to measure. Basically, uh, a thank you for nothing. I'll go to the next level. I called Grand Design back, spoke to my warranty supervisor that I was dealing with, told her what happened. Um, she said, I'll call you back. Let me get this figured out. We'll see if we can't maybe get someone out there. So in the interim, that was about two or three days that went by. I decided to be proactive and measure myself. Um, again, being a contractor, we have to, you know, when we build homes and site a space in to put a basement and a yard and everything else, we have to use lasers and electronic equipment and transoms and digital equipment for measuring. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and do what I can myself. So I measured it three different ways. I provided them with documentation of how I did it. It was irrefutable that there was a problem. They escalated to the next level and said, we're, we're accepting your claim. Well, then they basically later on in the day unaccepted my claim because they said, you have an air ride pin box and key thing here, people, and you have airbags in your truck. That voids the structural warranty, which I didn't know. But the clinker here is I do not have an airbag on my pin box. It's the Moride pin box that came with this camper. So I told her, please look at the photos again. There's no airbag there. That sort of showed me they were really quick to want to blame and to point fingers that it was if you do be quite descriptive in it because they will scrutinize it. Um, and, and to a degree, I understand where they're coming from. I guess for, for me, if I put siding on a house, or I put new house or I build a deck and the components fail, you know, I, I too want to know what, what was the homeowner doing? You know, why is that siding rippled like that? Did you have a grill too close to that? So I understand where they're coming from. Nonetheless, Tom, I had to, I, I had to jump through quite a few hoops to get my claim um, accepted. Right. It, it, you broke up there a little bit again, but just to kind of recap that the, they accepted your claim, but a short time later, they rejected it uh, for yes. airbags in the truck and air ride uh, uh, pin box, right? right? But it was the factory pin yeah. box, more ride, um, which is approved for a lippert frame, yeah. that, as we know. Um, and uh, so what happened then? Um, I told the warranty gal in charge of this, sweetheart, look at your pictures again. There's no airbag on my pin box. Um, and again, just to reiterate, it, it felt like they were trying to weasel out of it or get out of it any way they could by putting the blame on me. Um, so to the viewer, be prepared. You're, you're going to need to back up what you say because they're going to put you through the hoops of proving it. Um, they wanted pictures of my truck connected from all four sides. They wanted pictures of my truck disconnected from the camper, but a, a few feet away, all four sides, because they want to see how your truck is sitting with your camper. Um, yeah, they're, they're looking for reasons why they may be able to reject your claim. So be aware of all those things. And I, for me, Tom, I know there's a lot of people out there that are buying into, well, gosh, if I put an air ride pin box on my camper, I'm going to really improve the way the camper and the truck are acting with one another. If you throw a set of airbags on your truck, and we all know high-end trucks come with factory air airbags now. 
I, I had mine installed afterwards, but nobody I've talked to dozens and dozens of grand design owners who didn't know because there's no verbiage anywhere. We never saw anything in writing that said, if you add an air box to your camper and have airbags, we're not helping you. Right. And we think a lot of these aftermarket products are are good and they actually, I'm sure they probably are, but they haven't gone through the approval process to be like, I have a good example on our uh, Grand Design Momentum. We have a Gen Y executive uh, pin box and people love Gen Ys. I mean, they're very popular among Momentum owners but they are not approved uh, in this situation. Yeah. So that would be one of the first things they would probably kick back, I imagine. Information is coming out so fast on RV Frame Flex that we have even more updates for you that we can't get to in this video. So make sure you smash that subscribe button so you catch all of our updates on this and other RV issues. So you you got them to change their mind, right? Grand design. I did. Yeah, I did. I got them to, uh, you know, again, I, I told the gal that I spoke with on my claims to, you best go back and re-examine the photographs of the pin box. There's no airbag on there. It's factory, more ride rubber, you know, mounted pin box. And I backed it up by letting her know, I have pictures of all of my adventures throughout the years of owning this camper of where I've gone, how I've towed it, me on the road and everything. I'm like, if you need those, I'll give them to you. So another good reason, everyone to don't be afraid to take a lot of pictures of your trips and your equipment and all that kind of stuff in case you need to, to pull out your own insurance card on that whole thing. And so eventually they agreed to send somebody out to do the inspection, right? Or to get it ready to come back to Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> they did. So <clears throat> once my claim got approved and escalated to the next level in the warranty process, um, I received a phone call. They let me know that the Grand Design Rally was going on in Quartzsite, and they had a number of technicians that were heading to Quartzsite, and that I'd be able to get someone to come and assess my problem right away, um, which was great. That worked out good for me. You know, the, the communication process in that part of the whole thing was, was good. I'm the kind of person who's fairly impatient. I like to make stuff happen. Uh, again, being a contractor, you're in that go, go, go mode and you're used to problem solving. So it's frustrating because I'm like, why, why the hell is this taking so long? Why can't I get a call back today of what's going on? You know, that, that's my personality. So Take it for what it's worth that, you know, I did receive regular communication. I did receive phone calls, etc. So I got a phone call from the technician and he let me know. We worked it out that he was going to come Monday, just this past Monday on the 4th of March. Uh, that way the rally was over with and he wanted to bring another technician with him because he said, I pretty much know what's going on. I mean, nice to have a pair of hands because we're probably going to pull the file on and look deeper and do some welding and kind of get things where they need to be to get you road ready. Uh, Monday morning rolled around and I got a call from uh, the technician, the SRT, and he confirmed my address. He came up, he got here at about 10 o'clock, handed me a bag of goodies and a picture, part of the Grand Design family. <laughs> And uh, he said, first things first, I know that you know how to measure stuff and everything, but you know, I'm required to do my own. So I'm like, that's fine. Um, so he pulled out basically what he used to brace the pin box with Tom was the equivalent of, if you think of a grand design reflection, they use a different leveling system. It's not the full six point level like we have from Lippard on these big boys. These are the kind that if you see on the camper, you pull a pin and the leg drops down, you know, and then you level it in. So he took sure. two of those. He had two of those on a long pole that he could spin a wheel on and then jack it up. So he set those under my tongue, under my pin box. And 
proceeded to raise the middle and the rear four jacks, thus leaving all the weight on the front jacks of the landing gear of my camper. Once he had his jacks where he wanted them, he began to pull those jacks, or my landing gear up, so all of the weight of the camper and the pin box would rest onto his jacks. As he did that, my camper rolled off his jacks about a foot to a foot and a half, and bam, down onto the ground. My wife inside with our two dogs, who was scared to death. She didn't know what was going on. So I'm sure any viewer, let alone any wife out there, could about imagine being in the very back of a camper when it starts shifting and moving and all of a sudden slams down to the ground. I, I feel for her. That was pretty scary. Well, it, it could have been life-threatening in the wrong situation, you know, yeah. depending on what was going on inside. So yeah, that is... Yeah. That's very scary. Um, and how is she doing? Is she okay? Yeah, she's doing good. Um, we had to take a quick trek down to Havasu City yesterday because I was kind of forced into having to vacate a camper and buy a 20-foot trailer so I could get all my stuff home. But uh, we were sharing and talking about her experience, you know, and I was so caught up in what happened that day that I was kind of a bad husband because I didn't ask her, you know, how are you feeling? Honey? Is everything okay? Because I knew she was pretty shook up and uh, it uh, it knocked her around and scared the crap out of the dogs. And uh, she's she's still scared and, and traumatized a little bit by it, which I can't blame her. She looked right at me and said, there's no way I'm taking this camper all the way to Indiana to drop it off. I want nothing to do with it right now. They can come and get it. And yeah. But thank you for yeah. asking. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad she's okay, and uh, yeah, it, it it's a good reminder to other people when this process is happening. If they come out, make sure nobody's inside. <laughs> you know, uh, when they're yeah, doing nothing them, else. So. At least, at least chalk the wheels. I mean, I that's the first thing that came to my mind. If I do any work on this camper, or I relevel. Or even Tom, when I was doing my own measurements with that four ton jack and a six by eight beam, what do you think is the first thing I did? I put four wheel chops, one on the front, one on the back of each of the front tires. So I knew it couldn't do any of this. And, ooh, he didn't do that. And it crossed my mind right away. I, I, I was going to ask him, are you going to chalk the wheels? You know, but I thought, well, he's done this before. He's got his system down so i'll just let him do his thing i thought maybe if wheel chocks are there it'll affect his measurements so i don't know i, I don't know anything about how he was going to measure it so well now i know <laughs> right um well i hope they check that because that was a hard drop i mean hopefully that didn't cause more damage well i have i, I did some inspecting yesterday because i wanted to check the um, non-door side front jack because that one if you watch in the video is the one that really just took a wobble and uh, I did find uh, two cracked welds very small hairline cracks but I found them and uh, on the jack bracket itself that houses the lipper jack that's on there so yeah. wow okay so it did it, it did break more yeah yeah wow that i, I it, it's again it's it, the words are hard to when you, you just want to swear when, and you see that uh yeah. so uh yeah thank you for sharing that well um, they're they're lucky i'm kind of a calm person um because the day that we picked up this camper i had a brand new ram dually truck and they had connected the camper to my truck and everything. When we finished our paperwork at the dealership, we came outside. I was starting mm -hmm. to do my safety checks. And they were backing someone else's camper up with a spotter and a forklift. And they backed that camper right into my truck and wiped out a big part of the bed. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I stayed calm. I mean, they thought I was going to lose it, whatever. I... You know, in my world, that doesn't get you anywhere. You got to stay calm and things happen on the job. You know, I get it. But 
nonetheless, it's uh, good thing I shaved my head, Tom. <laughs> yeah, and the beautiful that's... thing about it, the beautiful thing about it is I got it all on video. <laughs> so moral of the story, if they come out to your site, take pictures and video. It might save your butt. Yeah, that was, was uh, I was heart wrenching. Yeah. Um, and if you go back and watch that video closely, and here we'll get into this, I'm sure, Tom, but here's where I'm up in an argument with them right now. You can see the camper as it tips off of those jacks and hits the ground. You see my frame. So if you find that video or you post it, Tom, watch the bottom, very bottom of the pylon against the cap against the jacks you'll see my frame go that's scary how do you right. fix that yeah uh yeah i i i wish um you could have a camera there when they take that off and actually see what's going on inside yeah and that's honestly tom that's what i was hoping for uh, he showed up by himself instead of two technicians so that this SRT that helped me told me that I asked him, are we going to remove the phylon? He goes, well, it's just me today. And I'm like, I know a qualified guy that can probably handle this with you. He said that because I have an appointment at the factory, uh, uh, I think he called it factory number nine, uh, 17. He kept referring to 17. That must be where they do the repairs or something. He said, because you have an appointment, there's really no need for that. I pretty much know what's going to be going on here. So we're going to check a few other things that I know will stiffen it up enough to get you on the road and get you to the factory for repair. The phylon didn't come down, and I got him on video as he's working on the inside of the camper. I asked him straight up, I was, you know, what? Uh, well, in your opinion, from what you've seen, we know I'm out of spec on my measurements for the pin box movement. You think there's broken welds or some other major stuff going on up in there? Um, he's like, well... It's possible, you know, there might be something compromised in there, you know, but they'll figure all that out at the factory. And uh, I, I wanted all that on video. I wanted to take pictures and video. Make sure you check out our companion blog post for all of our other videos, plus technical tips and how you can get help. That link will be down below in the description as well. Um, so after the pin box anomaly, we proceeded inside the camper and... He said, we're going to check the lag bolts. And I've heard about this many, many times from some of the other forums. And actually, I think, Tom, you brought it up in one of your videos before. Um, so we removed both couches and we removed the fascia board right under those couches of the trim piece that's put on over the lag bolts. And sure enough, um, and I sent Tom, I believe I sent you the, the photos, the front two bolts on both door and non-door side were non-existent on my camper there's supposed to be six or seven i think there's six if i remember right so there were four back behind the couch the two in the front on both couches both slides were non-existent uh, two of them had begun to back out so he did the classic fix that they required pulled all of them out re-drilled and then put all six in each slide and uh, said that should get you strong enough to get back to the factory. I don't know about you, but this this, this camper weighs 3,060 pounds on the pin. And I'm pretty familiar with sheer strength of bolts and what it does to a building if we don't do it right. And I'm not very confident that those are going to really support if the welds up front are broken or compromised with all the movement going on. That's a 2,000 mile trip from Bullhead City back to Elkhart, Indiana. But you know what? It's on them now. So, right. Uh, and that lag bolt issue, that is popping up in a lot of the cases we've seen around this, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In a big way. Um, if anybody out there follows, uh, like, say, the Grand Design Solitude page or any of the Momentum pages or Grand Design RV frame failure page, or even uh, Dustin's page. He's the guy that runs California RV specialists. It's all over his page. Hearing from my information about studying this whole thing, Tom, is that all that 
what's happening is what fails first is the stuff up front. And then it's transferring so much to the back area, whether it be the floor or the bedroom, right behind the nose cone of a camper, that that's starting to move and flex because the front stuff isn't doing its job. And then it starts shearing those leg bolts off or causing vibration so erratically that it's making them reverse and back out, making the wall separate even more. Okay. And for those that don't know, it's the lag bolts that actually hold the structure of the RV to the frame, right? That is correct, sir. And if I can paint a picture for you, Tom, you probably know this already, but I studied the diagram and the guts, if you will, of what's in that wall where those lag bolts go. So you have a piece of plate metal on the interior side of your camper. The wall that they set sets right up against that on the exterior side of that plate. In the wall is aluminum tubing. And inside of that aluminum tubing is a little piece of wood. And they put a big old bolt through the whole works. Not a bolt, a leg screw. A bolt would be a different thing. I wish they would have done that from the factory. So you've got a leg bolt, leg screw, going through that plate metal that's pre-drilled into the equivalent of about a two by two piece of aluminum tubing and a piece of wood inside of that. And that's what's supposed to hold your wall together as you travel down the road fast with a lot of bumps. Right. Right. And so is it that there were some bolts missing or did that were never installed period or they backed out and Tom, I'd like to tell you about that. <laughs> they were missing. I even have him on video when he pulled that off and I said, are there no bolts there? And he quietly just said, no. So I'm wow. not the only one. Almost every person I've seen that went in to check the leg bolts or had someone come out, I would have to say in my gathering of information that seven, eight, eight times out of 10, there were no bolts put in there from the factory, only in the back three to four holes. That is... What else is missing, Tom? What else is missing in our campers? I don't know. It 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 scares you. Yeah, I mean, just in our bedroom, um, we've got some upper cabinets where there's a spot for three screws, but they only use two, you know, on the hinge. And it's yeah. it's like, you know, you need to use all the holes you get, right? I, I mean absolutely there's a reason when I install. That. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I install construction or carpenter products out in the field, the manufacturers call for certain applications for installation. And having done this for 39 years, I might be an old dog, but I can learn new tricks. I make it my mission to make sure that I'm up to date and I get all the recent data. And I study this new products, whatever it may be to make sure we're installing it correctly. And a lot of that installation in my field, like the RV field, requires a lot of fasteners. So it just, it behooves me, Tom. Why? Why on earth? A company like Grand Design, who charges top dollar for their product, why is the most simplest of quality control on putting six or seven lag bolts in a wall failing on a massive number and that's just the lag bolts. What else can't we see that's missing? Yeah, totally. And it it does make you suspect other areas. And you're not a first time Grand Design owner either. How many Grand Designs have you owned? Well, Tom, funny you should ask. Since March of 2018, four. I wow. Owned four. Yes, sir. I've owned four Grand Design fifth wheels. We started out in a 2018 349M toy hauler, and we loved it, uh, treated us well the time we had it. Um, then we stepped up to a 351, and then after that, when the 395 MS came out, we were mind blown, so we bought that one. And then we decided that we're going to spend the bulk of our time 
not really towing a whole lot because we love where we go in Arizona and that we would probably just start leaving it here in covered storage. Uh, so we went ahead and went back across to RV country and we worked out a deal on a 2022 380 FL. And now I'm talking to Tom about my problems. So yeah. yes, we've had four of them. You like maybe have the record for the most grand designs. Has anybody had five or more? I mean, that's, that's a lot. If they have, I want to meet them, Tom. <laughs> I mean, you are the uh, picture of GDRV for life, uh, which for the non-grand design folks is uh, grand design forever, uh, basically was the motto of the company is they're looking for customers for life. Uh, yeah. And, and, and even behind the name grand design, it builds this image in your head of above the norm of quality and design uh, for something. So, uh, yeah. and I, yeah. I guess that's really the purpose of why you're willing to talk to me, you know, on YouTube uh, and share this with everybody because, um, you know, the company is, you know, they're helping you now, but this was not an easy process you know, for you to get the help you needed. Right, right. And, you know, I think I can unequivocally say the only reason, and I'm I'm almost embarrassed to say this, and I hope it's not the truth, but it seems sort of to be so. The only reason that this was escalated from zero to 10 in about 1.2 seconds was because my camper went plop. What would you share with... Um with the management of Grand Design RV? What, what do you hope that they, that they do for customers uh, going forward? If I could put it this way, um, I, I wish it wouldn't have taken this incident to get massive results, but this was when my video posted that evening, um, it, it went a little crazy and people got wind of it real fast and started watching it and word got out to grand design and um you know tom we've talked you know i'm pretty transparent so i'm going to share with the audience that i i asked riley this side of it, and he said my gosh at the rally that's all, all anybody wanted to talk about in quartzite 99.9 percent .9 everybody wanted to know about frame flex is it real what's happening what's going on so yeah it's, it's everywhere people are talking about it you know gosh how big of a problem is it you know and he's like well you know there's a lot of I'm sure you're on the pages, you know, you see what's going on. And, you know, I'm sure you watch YouTube and all the grand design pages and stuff. But you know what? We're on every one of them. We see everything that's going on. So we're well aware of what's going on on all the pages. And I'm thinking to myself, good. That's great. Because we're, we're grand design. Anybody watching this video who owns one, you're grand design. We make up the company. There's still strength in numbers. And this is still America. And whether your voice is big or small, you still count. So if you're watching this and you have questions, stand up, be heard. Your voice will be heard. You might have to shout it from a mountaintop, but you will get heard. Tom putting this video out, raising awareness. This is super important, you guys. Make sure you keep reporting your, your issues. Right, because I think bottom line, it doesn't matter how big of an issue is. It could be one person, one owner with this problem, or it could be everyone or something in between, but everybody should get taken care of. You know, they should have their problem taken care of. And I think something, you know, like, like I run into it myself because we're second owners, uh, so we're not we don't have the factory warranty anymore, but like our hope is that uh, by sharing this video and uh, sharing other people's stories like yourself, that, you know, something this catastrophic failure kind of goes beyond the standard warranty really should is, is a manufacturing defect like this, this big, this bad whether the unit's two years old or eight years old, you know, it, it should still be covered by the factory. Absolutely. I, I am in 
percent full agreement, Tom. You know, if anybody watches what's going on, there's obviously a ton of new videos that are coming out about brain flex, brain failure, whatever you want to brand this issue. Um, when it's something of this magnitude, in, in my opinion, number one, a lot of people, if you're having this, whether you're the first owner, second owner, if you're having the problem, you need to report it to the National Transportation Safety Board. Number one, they need X amount of cases in order to open this up. And I think there's enough of them out there. And number two, there's been so much posturing and finger pointing going on in this industry between Lippert or Grand Design. Um, I appreciate the videos out there that are getting made. In my opinion, the Again, I just want to be transparent and, and black or white. That's all I understand in my business, black or white. Tell me which is which. I'll navigate through it myself. So all the fluffy questions and everything, I, I want to know brass tacks. What's going on? Are these welds that bad from Lippert? What's going on? I mean, I will be the first to say or another, whatever. There's some welds on my frame that are pathetic. Pathetic. Makes me question, good Lord, they let this go? Lippert? Are you not inspecting every frame and weld that comes out of there? I don't know. Do they use automated welding? I don't know. Um, Grand Design, why are you hiding somewhat behind this issue? Why haven't you publicly come out and acknowledged we have a problem? You know, Tom, I spend a lot of money on Harley Davidson motorcycles for good reason. You know, I'm, I'm thankful and I'm blessed that I can afford to do that beyond blessed in that department. And I'm so thankful to my savior and God, and whatever you believe in. I buy into Harley Davidson for a reason. They take care of me. They make me feel like a family. They make me feel like I'm part of something great. And that's what I felt when I first got a grand design. I felt like I bought a new Harley. I mean, the way they surrounded me and ringing the bell and, you know, oh, skies opened up, etc. you know. The day after I recorded this interview with Greg, Grand Design put on their website uh, a page about RV Frame Flex, acknowledging the problem and how to get help. So we'll have a link to that in our companion blog post so you can check it out. I'm glad Grand Design is starting to, to step up and help kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I think they're very aware of what's going on. They'll see this video. But honestly, Don Clark and your crew, uh, Christine, you've been amazing to work with. She's been phenomenal. If they had a whole team full of Christines, this thing had already have resolved itself. But, you know, people like Don Clark who own Winnebago and these big corporations, you can't be pointing fingers. Who did what? Who did this? Who did that? You know, there comes a time, self-included, that I have to take ownership of something that happened. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. There's been times that I might have screwed something up or one of my team members screwed it up on a house or whatever, and I had to eat it. I had to buy it. I had to suffer somewhat of a loss on it. But what's important to me is building my customer base and my customers see that I take care of them. No matter how big or small, it could be from changing grandma's light bulb to building a house. We make sure they're taken care of. And that's what Grand Design needs to do. They need to step up and let their people know publicly that we got your back. We're going to take care of you. Bring back that trust in your company that you gave us when we bought it. Right. And you're more technically minded than I am or a lot of RV owners. Uh, but for a lot of us, we don't understand this technical part of it. And we shouldn't have to, like you said, the blame game between the manufacturer and Lippert, for example. Like, just get together and figure it out and provide a solution. Like you said, let us know you've got our back and you're going to handle it in a timely fashion and that we're going to be safe. And then problem solved, you know? Yes. Instead 100%. of, I feel like they're, they're, uh, they're, they're basically, hurting their own company by being silent. The, the reputation of, you know, here's one more video. Next week, there could be 50 more videos about this. Absolutely. How long does Grand Design remain silent when there's a thousand videos? I mean, when 
when sales start to slump, you know, we've gotten multiple people on our videos saying, oh, taking solitude off the list. You know, there, yeah. there, there are other RVs out there to buy. And I think it's going to, if it's not already there, which I think it is, they're going to save money by dealing with this problem than ignoring it. I, and honestly, Tom, for what's going on here and what's starting to rear its head with irrefutable proof of an obvious design flaw, albeit Grand Design's problem, Lippert's problem, I don't know at the end of the day, I don't care. I'm a consumer. Fix it. Take care of it. That's what I look at. And you know what I think? I hate to say this, but I really don't want this to turn into some catastrophic event where someone dies because you hit the nail on the head, Tom. Not everybody out there is technical. They buy a product, they drive it, they use it. If it breaks, guess what? I'll take it to them and they'll fix it. That's an easy connect to make happen. So number one, why is that not happening? And I think all of us just don't want that statistic to be us. I don't want to be driving my rig to Indiana to get repaired and all of a sudden the pin box finally gives all the way gone and my camper disconnects from the truck and somebody dies. I mean, that can't happen. It just can't happen. And the only way that's not going to happen is if Grand Design acknowledges this problem, makes a public statement about it, and either issues a recall or vows to take care of their customers, whether they're first or second owner, because people talk. This is this is the day of social media, baby. Everybody knows everything that's going on. And if they don't, where are they going to go? They're going to go to Tom's channel. They're going to research what's going on. The, the public is educated. They their head in the sand anymore. Right. And, and, and I'm glad you shared that from Quartzsite that, you know, this is already probably the number one issue with any Grand Design RVs. Nobody else is, no other issue people are talking about rises to this level in the volume of, of people talking about it. Yeah, I think... Um... If I could inject something, Tom, that I think is interesting, I started thinking about this whole thing. Why? Why in the past, let's say, one and a half to two years, why is this problem escalating? Why are we starting to see it more and more and more? And I started thinking, if you think back to 2019, 2020, during all the COVID scare, and when everything was going through, it was all about COVID, 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 COVID. And what did a lot of people do, Tom? They ran out because they had to isolate and they could now work from home. They bought RVs and they hit the road. We saw a huge influx of RV sales. Everybody was buying RVs. They were flying off the shelf. I mean, I bought mine in the heart of COVID. I, when they finally got a 380, we pounced on it. it, it ashamed to say, it, I almost didn't care what they're asking for. I want that 380. So families are buying RVs. They're buying up fifth wheels and motor homes and bumper pulls. And they're hitting the road and they're working remote. So now you have this big influx of people that are on the road driving these RVs, putting more miles on. I'm your classic example of what I would term a snowbird or a weekend warrior, whatever you want to say. My camper gets used three or four months out of the year and goes into storage. And I go back to work. I never see it again. I come back for the winter. So I'm not putting many miles on it. So people like me are going to be out of warranty and structural in another year or two, and then three to five years down the road, the problem's still going to be there. So that's why I think they need to issue a certain recall on certain units and make sure this doesn't happen. Is this going to be an ongoing perpetuating problem? That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, I, I, I think the longer the time goes on, the worse the problem is going to get. And you're like gambling with people's lives. Uh, yeah. both the RV owners, but other people on the road, should there be a catastrophic failure on the road? If you're a grand design owner, uh, look into this. Uh, if Absolutely. you own any large RV, you should yeah. be looking into this because, you know, we had it on our Forest River RV, uh, a 2013 model, actually. Uh, so we had it and got it fixed and had no idea even what it was at the time. Uh, so it's not a new problem. It's, 
it's it's a problem that they need to solve and you know sunset this problem so it it goes away basically so greg when do you expect to get your rv uh all fixed up and and get it back certainly um i had a half hour at least a half hour conversation with with uh the gal today that this was escalated to and she's going to be taking care of me from here on out one-on-one mano a mano um and i think it's all because of the delicacy of the situation so um i relayed to them that i am not bringing this camper back to you you send someone here to get it because of what happened um they're going to be sending a driver from the factory on the 13th ready for this one tom that day will be friday 13th Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, it will. I like to call that irony, but anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to come and pick it up. Um, she asked me to give her a comprehensive list of everything that I've noted that needs repair. And I basically said, careful what you wish for. You mean everything? She said, from day one, if you had anything I want to know about it, I want you to put it in the list. So the list is long. Um, you know, Tom, I'm I'm all about giving people the chance to rectify something. So I'm taking a very big leap of faith here. I explained to her my concerns with the frame. I have a nephew who's has a master's degree in engineering and designs and tests modules for huge mega structures back in Minnesota. Um, he brought up a few things to me that I need to be aware of. I brought them up to these folks in Grand Design, and I said, I can't tell you with extreme confidence, but I'm comfortable that they're going to fix the frame and everything back to spec. Um, she said that they're going to have a Lippert person on site who deals with the frames to make sure the frame's good to go, inspect all the welders welding and all that stuff and uh she pretty much agreed to the list that i gave her of repairs and fixes and they told me that they will extend my warranty and put that in writing from the day it leaves the factory as if it was the day i purchased oh nice yeah so you know i'm i'll be honest with you tom it's a, you know this is a big investment of a camper just like you and all the other grand design people that have the big boys spent their hard-earned money and it's it's a bit it makes me apprehensive because i'm not going to be there to watch it get fixed and from what i understand they're not big on sending photos of their repairs and saying what they did I'm going to put that as one of my prerequisites. If you want me to agree to all this and not take this further, I want photos, I want documentation, et cetera. So if anybody turns in a claim, et cetera, I hope that you push back and confirm that with them, that if I bring it to you after the technician comes to see you or they say to bring it in, scream loud enough and demand photos. To me, that shouts out, what are you hiding? Why do you not want us to see what's in there to begin with? Not everybody can take a file on or a cap off of a camera. I think the customer has a right to know. You know, when I bring a vehicle in for a repair, they'll either show me the parts that they took out. They'll walk me right. in and show me what they have to do. I mean, same way with a Harley Davidson motorcycle. They don't touch it until they tell me, here's what we found. Here's a picture. Want us to proceed? It, this is just common sense, Grand Design. Let your customers restore your faith in the customer base make us want to buy your product again that's that's what i think and when when do you think you'll get the your camper back oh certainly um my appointment is on the 19th of march she said that we'll probably need about three to five weeks depending on what they find so <laughs> with bated breath i shall wait and hope for the best and uh I'm going to give them the opportunity to make it right. Your technician dropped my camper. I'm sorry that happened. I, I even told her I don't want him to lose his job. It's unfortunate this happened. You know, I shared with her in my line of work and how I grew up that 
good students only come from great teach. Uh, their head of the field service division is revamping a bunch of stuff because of what happened. And they're going to be implementing new practices and procedures. So yay me. I got a t-shirt coming that says, I'm your whipping boy. So <laughs> changes will come. Changes are slow, but hopefully if we stay united and because of people like Tom here and your channel and speaking up for the little guy like me, we'll make it happen. We're still the voice of the customer, no matter what they say. Right. And I think this is part of the overall push for a, a better uh, quality standards in the entire RV industry that it should be treated more like the automotive industry where there's maybe some regulation uh, and some, some quality standards around safety and, and build quality because this kind of stuff just is not acceptable. Yeah, 100%, Tom. You hit the nail on the head, man. And I, Maybe you could enlighten me, but through my reading and research, it seems like, if I heard correctly, maybe you could correct me if you know, but from what I found, there's a very few small handful of states in America that actually have a lemon law on RVs. You know, I, I know they don't have one in Indiana. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I've heard that's why they're built there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but they are popping Can't laugh at yourself. They are popping yeah. up in other parts of the country. And, and, you know, I, I did a tour out in California and they're building some out there now. So they are definitely having to build them to a, a higher standard. So I'm hoping that, helps as well but uh so when do you go back to minnesota unfortunately involuntarily we're out of here a week from today so normally we stay to the end of march okay I'm without a camper i'm without a camper so thank god i'm not a full-timer and i still got the sticks and bricks back home to go to so. you gotta go back to the frozen tundra early huh yeah yeah i do do so you know and that's i've debated whether or not to demand that they bring my camper back to me when they're done in Minnesota. But do I, again, want to implement my goodwill faith and gesture that they'll take care of all the problems? Or do I go to the factory and walk through that whole thing with a microscope before I take it home? Any advice there, Tom, <laughs> at this stage of the game? Well, um, I... Gosh, if if you could if you could go there to do an inspection before, you know, you leave the factory, leave Indiana, I would say yeah. do that. I think um, so. And I and this is a I, I know you guys don't want to travel with your camper, and I don't blame you, but we had a really bad experience with our first RV uh, with the transport uh, taking it back for service uh and the transport drivers you know you just don't know what you're gonna get and and i i don't want to add any more stress to your plate greg uh but yeah i personally will not use a transport driver again i i will tr i will travel i will i will take the rv wherever it needs to go for for service uh for, th for that aspect, because uh, they are paid by the mile. And <laughs> so they, they'll they go as fast as they want to go. And yeah. so, you know. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe in an unlucky stroke of unlucky, I'll get the driver you had on Friday the 13th, and I'll be getting a new camper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we that we had an awning get taken out as it went back an awning was was ripped and gone we're well, not gone just torn uh we had a the uh ceiling fan hanging down it, it came free it was just dangling in the rv uh and when we got it back all all of the tires were over inflated by a lot so they oh had just God. put in 
an extra 10, 20 pounds of pressure into the tires just to whatever. And I mean, yeah, it, it was, yeah. Do you know, you know unequivocally, Tom, if your transport driver was for hire or worked directly for Grand Design? Um, that was with the Columbus. They went back to Forest River um, with that particular uh situation but i i think they're i think they're pretty much independent but i don't know i i mean maybe some of them are company but i I think the transport drivers are independent i i wonder because the escalated woman that i talked to in the department specifically told me this morning that she's coordinating right now that someone who works directly for grand design at the plant will be coming to pick it up oh great okay (laughs) great okay well that is that's great and uh gosh thanks again greg uh for your time and i'm so sorry to hear about your problems uh but you are a teacher in the moment here for all of us and what you've gone through and and uh i i really i hope to hear an update from you when the repairs are done and and how you feel, at, you know, so please let us know so we can sure. share with the audience, you know, when you get it back, how the repairs were done and that, you know, you feel hopefully satisfied with the end result. Uh, if you would let us know. Yeah, absolutely. I will. I'd be well so much Tom for, for your time and, and letting me share my time with you and my experience and, I would be honored to keep your contact info and reach out as soon as uh, repairs are made and what my experience has been or share any other highlights or hiccups along the way. And uh, safe travels back to Minnesota. I'll be a lot safer without this thing behind my truck right now. Until it's you, will, you will have some peace of mind, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Tom, <laughs> it's a pleasure talking to you, sir. I, I followed your channel for a long time, man. And I, Never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be sitting here talking to Tom. So, <laughs> well, we thank are. you so much. I I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to to meet you this way, and you know maybe we'll run into you back home in Minnesota or on the road somewhere. Yeah, sounds good, man. If you ever make it up north, I'll show you all the cool places. Until then, brother, you said it best. Life's a journey. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's time to enjoy the journey. Yeah, you got it, brother. Good luck right. to you, sir. We'll be in touch. Take care, Greg. Appreciate you it. Got it, bud. Take care. And you can find out more about Greg and their journey to get their RV repaired by following their channel. I will put a link uh, down below and also in our companion blog post so you can check that out.